Satu, dua, tiga. These guys are pulling a giant cement block into the ocean, one inch at a time. And they've got a long way to go, considering that by the end of this video, this same cement block is going to be 15 miles out in the middle of the ocean, laying in the sand, almost a mile deep. But before we get into how we are going to do this, let's first talk about why. The cement block will be anchored to this bamboo raft. And bamboo rafts, like these, are an extremely important part of the fishing culture here in Bali. They're also pretty important to me as well. You might have seen these rafts in some of my other videos. There are hundreds, if not thousands of them surrounding the island. Some are close to shore and some are more than 60 miles away. Small fish like to live under these bamboo rafts and big fish visit these rafts in order to hunt the smaller fish and fishermen hunt the bigger fish. For this reason, in the Western world, they're called fads, which is short for fish aggregating device. But here in Bali, they're called rumpons, which appropriately translates to fish home. I love these things. Not only have I caught some incredibly delicious fish out there, but some of my most viral videos were filmed around them as well. And I'm not the only one who loves rumpons. Northern Bali, where I live, is absolutely full of local fishermen. And as you can imagine, those guys love rumpons as well. When it comes to rumpons, the further out they are, the bigger and more abundant the fish are. And Near the village where I live, there previously were dozens of rumpons at least 10 miles from shore. But unfortunately, there was a huge tropical storm and all but one of them were wiped away. The currents in Bali are incredibly powerful, and combine that with the giant waves and powerful wind that come along with tropical storms, it's not a matter of if any given rumpon will be destroyed. It's a matter of when. And rumpons aren't cheap to build either. By far, the largest part of the cost of building one is the rope, and you need over a mile of it. But because the main economy of Bali, tourism, has been basically dead for the past two years, the rumpons that were lost have not yet been replaced. Until now. A few weeks ago, NordVPN sent me an email asking if they could sponsor a video. And so I took basically all of the sponsorship money, and along with the local fishermen, we built a new rumpon. To be clear, I did exactly none of the work. All I did was get in the way of these guys with my stupid camera. I was of no use to them. Because building one of these things doesn't just require strength. It's an incredibly complicated project and requires a lot of expertise. The sort of expertise that can only be gotten from decades of experience building them, losing them, understanding why they were lost, and then building some more. And this is the story of how one of these things are made. But first, I'd like to thank NordVPN for making this entire project possible by sponsoring this video. If you live abroad, like I do, having a VPN is more of a necessity than it is a luxury. Every country in the world has different laws about what websites are banned and what content is copyrighted. And aside from being hard to keep track of these arbitrary and ever-changing rules, it can also be pretty frustrating. For instance, the Netflix shows that are available in England are not necessarily available in the United States, unless you have NordVPN. Go to nordvpn.com slash aquatic apes to get a two year plan plus one additional month for free. This is a Black Friday sale, so it's not gonna last. Here in Indonesia, Reddit is not allowed. Don't ask me why, it's just not. But with NordVPN, it's no problem. And this is just one of many, many examples. Having a VPN lets you bypass the digital bureaucracy and allows you to become sort of a global citizen digitally. So again, go to nordvpn.com slash aquatic apes, which is linked in the description below to get a two year plan plus one additional month for free. This deal is for Black Friday. So if you're thinking of getting a VPN, you might not want to wait. And thanks again, Nord, for helping us build this rumpon. Speaking of which. Step one, a giant cement block will serve as the anchor. I'm not an engineer or a scientist, but I would imagine in this scenario, the bigger, the better. And this one's pretty big. Now we let the cement dry for a few days. There's a tire in the middle of it, which is reinforced with steel. The bottom of the rope will eventually be tied to it. Step two, build the actual raft. This part took just one day. The bamboo is arranged in a way that makes it hydrodynamic, and a few floats are secured to the bottom for extra buoyancy. Step three, pull the anchor into the ocean. As you can imagine, this is the most grueling part of the process. Thankfully, these little guys were here to help. In Indonesian, satu means one, dua means two, and tiga 
means f*** this shit, I'm going home. By sunset, it was almost in the water, and early the next morning, it was submerged. Step four, organize the rope. As I mentioned, there's over a mile of rope. And again, I'm no engineer, but I'm pretty certain that making sure that the rope doesn't get tangled is of the utmost importance here. Interestingly, when you buy huge quantities of rope like this, you're not charged by the length you're charged by how much the rope weighs. Eventually, it's loaded onto my little blue boat in an organized fashion. Step five, make a beautiful sign for the rumpan. That phrase is Balinese for, please hit the like button. Step six, attach the rumpan to the anchor and prepare for launch. Now that the rumpan's ready, and the rope's ready, and the anchor's ready, it's time to bring them all out to sea. The rumpan is attached to this much bigger boat, and then dragged. Back in the day, they would drag this anchor with 20 of these smaller white boats, but it's much more dangerous and it takes longer, so we just use this bigger boat. Most of us ride on the big boat, a few guys ride in my small boat with the rope, and a few others ride all the way out there sitting on the actual rumpan. It's a long journey. Right now, it's noon, and we won't arrive to the destination until sunset. And we have lunch on the boat. It's a Balinese dish called nasi champur, which is basically rice, chicken, veggies, noodles, peanuts, and ungodly amounts of spice. And you're supposed to eat it with your bare hands. Although, to be honest, I do prefer a fork. Of course, lunch is delivered to the guys hanging out on the rumpan as well. Six hours later, we arrive. The rope is unloaded from my small boat and spread out so it doesn't get tangled. One end is attached to the anchor and the other end is attached to my leg. Just kidding, it's attached to the rumpan. And now for the moment we've all been waiting for. The depth here is about 1,500 meters deep. That's just under a mile. If anyone knows how to calculate how long it took that cement block to reach the seafloor, please, please, please let me know down in the comments. I don't smoke, and I don't recommend you smoke either. But I imagine that a post-rumpon launching cigarette is pretty satisfying.